Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to what has just shaped up to be a bit of a, a bit of a howdy doody. Stop touching my keyboard, Raz. As we go into game number two, Suiting and get away from here. Suiting and IG jumping back on some of his rift after what was well a game one loss for IG. That was slamming. It was an absolute. IG. That's, look, this is the. This is the stuff I do like, right? Whenever you come in, you know you're going up against a team that is definitely playing up. Invictus mm -hmm. Gaming right now are playing, and it does like when you look to the standing, that standing deceives you. Yes. <laughs> they are much better than where their current standings are placed. And right now, if you're going up against them, like you pull out that Gouda. And in fact, I won't even call it Gouda because you can pull it out again. Uh, and it's a consistent play that you can go up against the Sona and Tark. And that's why we don't see Sona and Tark consistently on first phase anymore. Yep. First phase Sona and Tark, a lot of times you wait and see what the enemy composition, at least what the bottom lane has to offer, right? Because you're even willing to go up against a Sivir uh, uh, Lux lane because you're like, okay, at least we understand we can just like heal up in this circumstance, stay under tower and we're fine. But in that situation, they couldn't even, they were not put under tower. They were being frozen on. They had to actually yes. extend past the lane to deal with that nonsense, and it wasn't working out. As soon as the bottom lane hit level three from suiting, it's like, well, this is crap because they're just going to take the all in. And yep. uh, there were so many lanes going wrong, but it all started in the jungle with our MVP of game one, Wei Wei. How up many the kills score. did he get? 10, 0, <laughs> and 10. Aatrox gets bad for many reasons, and that man. That smug look is well He's deserved. Playing full binary, one zero. Like the guy was literally killing it. Uh, yeah. So we're back in that whole Aatrox hype train. Mm -hmm. And I cannot tell you how many times I've, I've cast it a lot of times alongside you, actually. Yeah, actually. Yeah. Uh, if we just line up the last ten games, how many games did Aatrox get an MVP for? Uh, probably like a good uh, few Five million. Yep. Yes. Uh, and in this case, he was able to get a lot for himself. Not only that first kill that Ning made a mistake on, looked at the bottom side of the map, what we were referring to was the 2v2 that ended up going in favor of Suning, unsurprisingly. Uh, and then you see what ends up happening is that, once again, you focus back on top lane. At least they, they this was desperation, right? You already lose the first time around, the first death comes through, you double down on the play, and at least, in his mindset, at least you get the kill on the VP. But it really needed to teleport in to make the play happen and it already shows to you how much the game was in the bag for Sunning. That was a third kill for Wei Wei. So, uh, yeah, snowball. An absolute snowball. Developed to points like this where more desperation plays from IG, but just so many windows created by Sunning. That was a great opening. You talked about the Rift Herald play being an, a, a, a necessity. Like, they had a full shove bot side. Sona could have teleported to this play, but didn't think she was even needed. She wanted to get a full shove off and at least expected Sunning to back away. Yeah. But no one gave him the memo! And the only reason that Bowland survived, well, he didn't in the end, uh, is because of the cosmic radius. <laughs> but Don't they show this! It doesn't matter. Maple's like, yeah, well, still worth. So, we just had a. I love highlight reels like this because you just got to see the gravity of the situation Invictus Gaming had to deal with in just a short, bite sized moment, right? Uh, so, at least the Shy, there were great moments for the Shy where he was able to pick up 3v3 uh, team fight kills and yep. set up for the team fight, which made this game seem like, you know, a back and forth situation. Ning somehow came back in, and then Ning threw this. it right back at them. This. So, that one really infuriated me. If you're talking <laughs> about my blood pressure, that's what gets it high. That's what gets it spiking. Because IG was back in motion. Yep. They got the mid lane tower after that pick, they got the uh, inner turret. And right. I would have liked for them to go towards the Baron afterwards. Or at least threaten and get control. Exactly. But they ended up going for the... You know what? It's okay. You still go for the inhibitor tower. Right. But then they turned it into a dive. That's yeah. strict. That's... Against that cop. Like, you got a pike. You're that's dealing... That's dog. Yeah. So that's what kind of, you know, gets you a little bit frustrated. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you have to give it off to Sinning. Sinning had an amazing composition that they were able to yeah. come back on. A great roam timing to talk about the fact that them finding a timing up topside. We will not see a Sona Tark in the first phase for Invictus game yes. just because of that. Definitely agree with that. For IG now, it's about uh, recovering from what that game one was because Ning picking up the Camille while it is an expression of how he is as a jungler did not facilitate IG once he fell so far behind. He got read like a book. Yeah. At the end of the day, whenever it comes to a Camille pick, he picks it because he feels like those ganks are easy. Yes. You can make it happen top lane, mid lane, but what ended up happening when top lane, it was turned quickly because of this man, Wei Wei. Then he went towards mid lane, and Maple says, I don't, want to, I don't even want to touch that. So safe. Man had a second screen up or something. Knew <laughs> that he was just sitting in that bush. So ultimately, Suning had played out the whole Camille gambit incredibly well. And if we're talking about personality of Suning, remember that 
Uh, there is a comfort champion that's going a, a miss here, and we didn't talk much about the mid lane, but for someone like Maple, if he gets Silas, he is going to absolutely dominate. This has been his mainstay champion, his seventh game, where his most next played is Nico at two. Well, he just plays them out, right? Like, yeah. There is nothing that... I feel like Maple is comfortable under any circumstances, because last split, when everyone is going towards the Lissandra, he was the Lissandra player. Same thing goes towards the uh, Nico mid when right now it's catching fire across the world. Debatably the better Kennet. Okay. And so you're in a situation right now where your mid laner is a great facilitator, a great roaming type. Right now he just has such a great IQ and understanding of the map. Is very much like he reminds me of Ryu from 100 Thieves where he can come in and you don't really know him as a, the best mechanical player, especially going up against, let's say, Rookie if, this was, if he was playing in this series. Uh, you know, Maple is going to try and outthink you. He's going to think about the rest of the team, trying to support the top side or bot side. Yeah, like, great facilitator. Exactly, and I feel like that's what he's able to provide for this team. That's just what Suning need, especially when we've hooked up the top side of the map. And uh, for Wei, we're coming into game two. Another possibility, or rather guarantee for you, is the fact that I don't think we're going to see Aatrox once again here in this second game. Imagine getting smacked up by redundancy. <laughs> like, just imagine. We got to give him. We got to give him a nickname at some point. Like what? The Wayview Brothers. Okay. Don't say okay. That's awful. I was say, it wasn't incompetent, okay? I was like, well, <laughs> sure. Someone out there will make it. We need to have it solidified. It needs to be on a plaque. Just simply because they're working so well together when they're just, yep. you know, joining the team for the split. Yeah, that's right. Double trouble rest. Uh, no, that's too... Uh, no, try. We'll, we'll stop. We'll use it. We'll try again later. Try again. Maybe the other time. That's We're already great. starting with some awful suggestions. Yeah. It can only get better from here. Uh, maybe the positivity that needs to be hit up by IG. Now, uh, we're talking a little bit about draft here, but uh, you got to add something to the change in Fluid Wind as we come into the second game, that this change up for Sooning all around has been such a positive move that now they're on the verge of potentially 2-0-ing or taking the second game against IG. Now, we'll see what we get in this next pick and ban. The best thing about Invictus Gaming is that they do bounce back. Yes. We saw that when they went up against Top Esports this well last week. So they can do it. We'll have to see when we come into the game, too. Here comes Pick and Ban. See if Tuning can challenge them again, but let's go. IG on the red side. And surprise, surprise, what gets banned away? Well, Aatrox will not be showing again. And at this point, you can probably just go to... We'll have to see. Okay, Aatrox... Uh, the Azir, Azir first Azir ban phase. Ban. played it a bit. Interesting, because... But, yeah. Azir has been a pretty decent option into the Silas, so it makes it easier for Tuning to make this trip pick. Yep. So Maple once again, rinse and repeat. First lock in here, but IG, uh, they want to go down that path again, possibly give Forge his Aurelia, and the Lux this time will be showing on Bow Lab. I'm sending, there's no downside of going Sivir and Yumi here. Just as a response, because you need to pick up your support. Worst case scenario is that, you know, you can't get back to an Enchanter like Yumi in second phase. That'll just get banned out by AG, so it seems like it's going to be a guarantee. We'll end up seeing what happens. Some people end up going towards a Nautilus anyways. It just depends on what Sword Art's feeling. Yep. Okay, here we go. There's Yumi. Uh, that just disappeared for a second, but uh, don't expect to see the pike once again down the bottom lane. As you mentioned, Siva, open and available here. Yeah, you just need wave clear. If that's going to be a Silas in the mid lane, you need a uh, wave clear option. Siva will be just that. Mm -hmm. Unless... I'm sorry, I said it. I'm willing, man. I'm willing and able. Hell yeah. Just pick a Siva. Please pick Siva. All right! All right, welcome back to pike. Look. Remember, doesn't mean it's triple going to flex. Line. Yes, exactly. You can go mid lane, top lane. It really just depends what we get in the second phase. Now you just have to be a constant thorn in Victus Gaming. They're picking up the Zaya for the protection that she has post six. Yeah, you got the Lux to pair with it. So now you're like, well, we start banning top lanes, mid lanes. Where is this going? It's the Renekton first, which is Bubu's uh, by far best champion. So they're focusing on the top side. Yeah, good call ultimately. There's not much you can do. You just have to start banning away options that deals very well up in Invictus Gaming. And right now I'm concerned about the necessary wave clear that they have. I mean, looking at the Zaya, she's fine. She just has to, she's a mid-range champion, so she has to put herself near the thick of things. Might get picked out by the pike. So I want some bit of protection here for Invictus Gaming. If you've got rid of the Kindred there from Suning, then you see that, right. Uh, what can Ning provide this game if we're speaking about the composition? Yeah, you're not going to have the Javan in the thick of things either. I like the Kindred Ban. I might go for a Karma as well because Karma mid lane has still been a, a major force to be reckoned with and a Karma ultimate heat-like shield alongside the Aurelia 
Zaya is pretty insufferable. Yep. Uh, so we'll see what Suning has to be fearing. Uh, I'm currently not happy with uh, Karma being on the field. I also seen Karma top as well, so a lot of flexibility with the champion. Gragas, the final ban, it's open. And she's been the go-to matchup versus Silas. Yep. So whenever you see a Karma on the field in, in the top lane, it's because they want to be able to, uh, you know, get Klepto in the matchup. So see what that choice ends up being. If it's going to be a rec side pick up here, we have to find out in second uh, in the last pick. More standardized champion for Ning to pick up here in the LPL, so uh, you're not going to get the rinse and repeat of Camille in game one. But instead, with the Rek'Sai going up against the Mystery Jungler and Suning, they don't have many options left to take in, but uh, for Wei Wei, Xin Zhao is there. Not much you can do here if you're Ning. You I mean, you just wanted to find yourself some early gank pressure and an early skirmishing jungler, but you end up having to blind pick because Suning ended up throwing their jungle to the second phase, so... Yeah. Great pick here for Weiwei, end up getting the Xin Zhao. He can try and mimic the same thing he did last game round. Raz, I just wanted to point out super quick. I know, I saw it too. SMLZ summoners. Yep. That's a still pike, the same. That's a pike bottom lane. If it was yeah. working in scrims, if it's working in game one, they're going to try and mimic it in game two. All right, so you're looking now for a top lane potential. Gubi goes for the cannon, and there we have our confirmed answer. They should not show us summoners. They should just block it, you know? At Keep least. us surprised. Whenever there's a Hecarim on the field, I don't want to see Ghost on the jungle. Yeah. I want to have some bit of surprise when, it, when the clock hits 20 seconds of where it's going to be going. At least IG can't see it. They pick up their top lane. Well, rather mid lane. We'll find out where this goes because the Shy has been a big Nico fan. Yeah, I think it's going to be going up top side as you would expect. You know, just because there's so much 1-3-1 one, one potential here. Have your split push up through your Aurelia and Nico. Just comes down to that fear that Suning are going to look, kind of hunt for those kills, much like you saw in game one. Feast your eyes on a composition that once again is taking the pike to the bottom lane. SMLZ is sick of playing League of Legends. He wants to sit back, relax, and let his support do the talking. It's just a fun way to play the game, and it really shocks you to the court when you watch teams play like this because you saw it in MSI. Just the idea of Pike being on the field, not in his traditional role. And I think that's yeah. something that a lot of people end up realizing that suddenly Pike has the ability to leave its lane so frequently. And it really runs you into a loop because, like, primarily, <laughs> the developers probably thought when Pike got picked up, he's like, great, we got an assassin support, throw him down there. He won't move. He won't, he's gone. Like, uh, he needs to deal with the poke coming in through the bottom lane. That's going to be a worry. Give him as yep. much sustain as possible. <clears throat> Jensen, you work on the mechanics that come through. We're good. And then suddenly, quadruple flex. That's fun. I will say, <laughs> I hope it stays. I think it's just a fun, like as a viewer, you start heating up popcorn just for that stuff. Mm -hmm. Like that's the stuff that you were like, this is what I yeah. want to watch. This is what gets you rolling. When there's an innovation within the, in the game. I'm not talking about like lane swaps, though that was fun for me. I'm just talking about like the champions in order. When they start moving from lane to lane, they change how you think about it. In Victus game, yep. you have to be concerned about where Sword Art is when he gets a shove out. It's going to be a different lane, though. It's not the Sona Tarek. It's a lot more versatile. Jackie Love and Balan have a lot more kill pressure here as well. And you'd expect Balan to go towards Aftershock. Yep. Keep himself alive a little longer. Much better standing in the lane and in game one. Volatile 2v2 begins here in game number two. And see if IG can start fighting back. Otherwise, for Suning, this would be the upset before the week's even begun here in the LPO. Let's get right into it as always. We are late to the party, it seems. Well, the party has not begun. Nah, we're, we're late to the party. Okay. At this point, we've been trying to just mute these guys uh, <laughs> whenever they start going rampant. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> like a bar that chants. just kicks people out. The kind of chant. There's just a few chants. Whenever they have the time to be <laughs> yeah. able to chant for their favorite player or, we, we or to meme. We heard the Condi chant. Instant mute. Yeah, get them out of here. That's very fair. Ooh, nice word. That's why I'm... You already know why I'm sad about not, as be, uh, not being able to see level 1s. Yeah, I know, Raz. I know you like level 1s a lot. I do. It's very fair. Uh, the minimal information we'll take there is the fact that, as you said, the ward's been dropped there at the red buff, so soon you're going to have a good idea of where Ning's starting. 
Uh, there is a ward there from IG as well to stop the early invade towards Raptors. And ultimately his movement too. If you end up seeing his movement go up upside, then you can, they're already pinging it out as you can see in the minimap, that they know that Rek'Sai size on uh, Krugs. Yep. So he's going to get a full clear on his top side. Makes you understand and be able to communicate to your bottom lane, Sword Art and SMLZ, we pick for you, and you have free reign right now. Enemy jungle is nowhere near you. I also want to point out that this time it's going to be the Conqueror Rex size. We saw Halo Blades earlier on, but Halo Blades for the Xin Zhao. So, uh, good comparison here between jungle, but once again, the focus on the bottom side of the map with the Pike and the Yumi, but even more so this game where the top side, even though the junglers are heading up there, it seems like there's volatility in looking for some of that first blood. Spellbook Cannon. Very true. Something I want to check into. Spellbook Cannon, I mean, a lot of it just means that uh, you can change up summoners whenever you want, obviously. Yep. Uh, the offensive summoners of Ignite could be a good uh, tool if you were uh, in a 2v2 alongside Weiwei. That's going to be a fun one. But also, if we're just looking at the pick potential that we end up seeing from the enemy team, there's so much of it. Cleanse can lend a hand, but here's Ning. Creative pathing from Ning. Seen this from many Rek'Sai jungles in the LPL. There was no ward down. Level 3 doesn't want to go in just yet. Look, it's every top laner's greatest enemy. Get a ward down on that. Is whenever a Rek'Sai is uh, on red side to be able to make that gank happening because obviously the wave is pulled in such a dangerous position. But take a look and at I said the bottom side, great wow. flash into the stun here. Jackie Love gets ignited down. They leave him. They know he's already dead, but Weiwei's going to go and have to finish this kill up. Jackie Love, get ready. There's the spear and there's first blood for Sooning yet again. Early gold on Weiwei, handed it off to him. That's just so hard to deal with and it is not dealing with it well. Struggling with this bottom lane, but this time this is where Weiwei gets his first blood. And we've seen this story before, Raz. What happened in game one was a snowball effect. Xin Zhao is just that champion. And it's just it's another game where you see cross map plays going through. There's a trade happening. Ultimately, that's a 2v2. Sun's going to come in. Ning's coming in as well. Weiwei shows himself Wait a minute. early, but Forge drops the Ignite down. They flash on top of him. What's he doing? Audacious charge is late. Big mistake from Sunin's jungle. I'm not sure I can explain that one. Yeah. How you doing, buddy? I think he used Audacious Charge on the Scuttle Crab on the bottom side and just kept walking up. No, it doesn't even matter. Why are you walking up? Like, regardless of that, he went for the play and obviously didn't want to, like, fully commit to it. Uh, that was just a little bit of a misplay, but ultimately I thought that, uh, you know, Sunning were doing a great job on the cross-map plays. Like, Rek'Sai went up top side, Couldn't find anything because BB played incredibly safe. Gank kills, goes towards Weiwei. And the 2v2, I actually would have expected both junglers to completely concede that area. Because yep. this is really risky, especially when Rek'Sai can flash on your head. But, I mean, he challenged for the play and paid the iron price. So in the mid lane, when you lose, like, whatever happened there, when you lose so much pressure. Redemption! Wants to come back in. There's no mana. He flashes on into Forge. They flash as well. Maple! A lot of questions. The crowd asking the same ones. Redemption postponed. <laughs> <laughs> the double flash for the play. They really expected Forge to get picked off. Forge has been playing... Uh, really well since joining the team. Yep. Always expect, you know, the, the, the pressure to get to him, but hasn't been the case. And here comes uh, the gank potential. To the bottom side, flash away from Baalan, so at least they're getting something here with Weiwei's pressure, but uh, it's small compared to what just happened in the mid lane. And we've been talking about how last game, Ningus has been going risk for risk, because obviously that was just what he's going to have to do on the Camille. Yep. This time around, Weiwei's just been on the field constantly. Now, he hasn't had the uh, Raptor camp up at all, so obviously he's just had Krugs and his blue side. But he's nowhere near it, so obviously he just tried to go for the kill before uh, needing to take Krugs. Nothing's really panning out for him. No, it really isn't. So slow down here for Sooning, and uh, what you'll start to notice is the mid lane already has a big CS lead. Bottom side finally catches up for Sword Art, but uh, it's not going to be enough. And the most quiet person seems to be getting the POV this time. Yeah, just watch as waves crash underneath his turret. <laughs> That sounds real smoothing. Like, yeah. smoothing. Soothing and smoothing. smooth. It looks smoothing. Yes. Nice word, right? Nice, thank you. Push finally going to come in here from the smoothing bottom lane as well. So 26 to 26. Not a bad, but Jackie Love should be able to pick up the majority of this. As he gets pushed in, Balan finds a double stun. <laughs> uh, well, he was going to get hit by that no matter what. Yep. Ward's in that bush. They're not going to be able to see it. So they're going to be committing to this. Smoothie we'll trying to stop the back, but Sword Art can't get a break. A lot of time wasted. Yeah, they can back uh, whenever they want, regardless, just because even though they're losing the Infernal Dragon, they're not going to be losing waves at all. Yep. Um, so, no teleport from Sword Art and SMLD, they're not concerned. To be fair, they would have lost that Dragon no matter what, because shoved in mid lane. I think Forager, you already mentioned the CS advantage, he's been doing quite well for the lane. Yep. And, I mean, Rek'Sai's been having full autonomy bot side. That's just been the reality for sitting in the bot side of the map. I'm, exp I'm surprised 
that it hasn't been a larger gain from Invictus Gaming. That you know, it was actually Jackie Love and Bao Lan that paid a price on the bot side early, where you know, consistent shoves been coming from IG. Yep. You would have expected uh, you know Ning to just be on the bot that side of the map for a little longer. But he's okay for the time being. And if we're talking about Ning, who's just uh, pacing himself along, it's a much better start for him, of course. But in this early game for IG, they still hold an 800 gold lead. They picked up the Infernal, as you just saw then. And uh, with more control towards the bottom side, double Infernal as a potential, the map goes more so to IG. Even more so now. Boo -boo. Oh, he walks back in. Raz. Tangle Barb is not going to connect. He has to pop up Blossom, and that's going to be for the Shy, who jumps on top. Ning gets damaged to half health. A flash away from Bubu. Wait a minute. He even heals with a spell walk. He jumps in. He's like, oh, no. Forge is here as well. They spin. They win. And the Shy picks up his first kill. He did so well for what was seemed like a 2v1 situation, but Forge ends up helping his team and yep. losing a wave for it. So not a bad way to go. If you're someone like Maple, you say, well, I'll trade that as best I can. And Weiwei's been spotted down the bottom lane while Ning is just going for the deep invade. This is going to be the play from Sooning. Oh, they're going to collapse. But Bowland sends out the shield. He goes back. He's going to sacrifice his own light. What a good support. But Weiwei wants more. They want Jackie Love, but he's already out. He had to burn the flash to do so. It's the example of the IQ we are talking about from Maple. Not only was he shoving out that mid lane wave, but made the cross play towards bot side. Helped out. His boy way away to be able to get that one kill, so good job. So much pressure here now. Only costed him one wave too, so that was a lot of movement here from uh, Forge to start off. I really love the punishment from Sunni. And down the bottom lane, that turret plating goes down even quicker. Uh, we're going to see a couple of plates taken off while in the mid lane. Final spark used by Maple, who just trying to clear the wave and uh, now finds that Forge has stuck around for a little bit longer. Concerning point at this time, if you look at IG, look at their top lane, uh, the Shy has a lead as well. So as we go back into this replay, this play, not for Nord, but it's Sooning trying to catch up. Balan played it smart. I mean, he took down the Blast Cone, thought he was just dealing with three people. Wasn't even the case. Uh, didn't expect Maple to be making the play towards the mid lane, so it was Forge who was left in the dust. He ended up coming back from top lane, going to mid. Take a look at this, though. Ning's going to spot him out. He jumps over the wall anyway. Ning flashing on top of Weiwei, but the Xin Zhao in such a good position. Death from below, not needed. Weiwei picks up his third. Jackie Love tries to get the AoE damage, but the Yumi heals up just in time. He's just looking into the Matrix. <laughs> Weiwei recognized somehow. Obviously, we didn't get the full context coming out of the replay, but just knew where he was going. Altied him into the final chapter. Great stuff you want to be able to see from Weiwei. He's been just balling this series. This is what the start of this series. It was Weiwei, but also the execution here from Sooning, which is not slowing down. Sorta and SMLZ looking for more blood. Alt's down on SMLZ, or rather Sorta, sorry. But you can see, still with the flash up and available, they have the damage to burst. Right now, this, this lane changes a lot. If you end up being able to uh, get the TM map for yourself, going into another replay. replay. He sees him. He actually and he saw sees him. him here as well, look. Yeah, he saw him completely. Uh, probably thought that he was the only one. I don't know. That was actually a really weird call to be able to make from uh, Ning, and he gets punished for it. Yeah. Because that was a play where Weiwei thought he was completely uh, covered up. Uh, but, you know, I guess he got a lot from that one. And when you're uh, Xin Zhao, who was trailing before on top of Ning, plays like that, really hurting IG because he's got three kills now, once again ahead. Ning's trying to pick up the Rift Herald, but going to be challenged here by Suning. Oh, here we go. Balan's in a good position here, but they're going to have to work through the Maple, light binding pretty Vanguard's easily. Vanguard's edge is available. He sends it out. They go over the Rift Herald. It is taken eventually by Sooning. IG get out alive, but they get the jungle. Sooning runs on in. That's Sword Art who flashes and dashes very quick on the Pike's behalf. A kill for the Rift Herald. Yeah, great. Duck out of there. The fact that they were able to smite it, be able to pick it up and get out. I was really concerned for Sword Art on that one, but clean operation from Sooning. Takes the Yumi with him as well. Heads towards the bottom side. Bit more plating for Jackie Love, who was the only one who didn't want to join the fight. And Sooning's bottom lane now rotate to the mid lane, are looking to potentially drop that Rift Herald and start opening up the map. I love the fact that they were able to pick it up. If it was BB, it would be a little bit more complicated because he's on the weak side. But now, oh, looking for the play. It's a shark. He Got found him. him. Adult shark coming in. Do, do, do. There we go. Balan doesn't. Really get a chance in that play. Fourth kill over to Weiwei. Now you can just look towards the next place you want to be able to place that Rift Herald. I think it should be mid. Uh, but ultimately, just a great pick off on Bao Lan. You've got a lot of space now created here by Sooning. 
Uh, clearing out the vision towards the bottom side. Weiwei can walk up here. Wave is pushed. Forge is here, though, so not keen on dropping the Rift Herald just yet. It's one of the greatest risks in dealing with Suning's composition specifically. The movement speed that you have to deal with on the side of Sword Art. And on, <laughs> with Yumi as well. Like, yeah. that's actually just a, a ton of movement speed that you have to be able to duck out. And the isolation damage. Like, the fact that if you are isolated, you get picked off. You're just done. It's an excellent pick composition. You need to be able to group up to make it harder to deal with. And... At this point in time, Bao Lan wanted to be able to clear some vision in light of not just the dragon, but in between plays. Oh, no. A super obnoxious play you are talking about just before. Bao Lan gets dragged back. That was slick from Sword Art with a TP coming in as well. Soon can commit five to the bottom lane, but that's a lot of resources burned for not much gain. Diamond. I mean, that's flash off Bao Lan. They can try and make a pick on him once again if okay. the next fight comes through. So let's take a look at Suning. They're making their bases now. But they're going to try and make a play around Sword Art because he's been holding onto that Rift Trail for a pretty long time. I heard the Nico ult get popped in the top side. The Shy using the Pop Blossom to clear the wave. He's getting so much by himself in the top lane. And IG oh wants no. something in the bottom lane as well. He's been locked out. Rift Herald is going to be disassembled. It actually comes out eventually. The Sword Art gets dropped on down. Yumi by herself onto Weiwei. One for zero. Rift Herald here, but no one gets the goal. Yeah, the Binding didn't stop him. So easily you're able to just go through it. I was really concerned, not just for the Binding, but for the Rek'Sai, actually. If the Rek'Sai knockup came in clutch, then it would have been able to uh, completely nullify the play. But still able to go for it. I'm always oh. concerned whenever it comes to... Actually, he's going to might actually die here. He has to pop the ulti. It's a fake clone. The Shy can still just send a little drip down. Uh, might be in a bad position now as Maple wants to come up. Doesn't have the ulti just yet. He misses the Tangle Barbs, trying to kite his way out. Pop Blossom comes down from Maple first. Goes golden, does the Shy Forge, Ooh. comes in. Flushes in with the Vanguard's Edge. Can't get the reset, but Buell has locked himself into the Death Chamber. He will drop first. Maple gets locked down, but Forge saves the Shy's life. Pure confidence in that one. Sword Art might get picked out if he goes any further. Trying to pull in Ning. He's trying to kite his way around eventually. Does get dragged on in. Death from below available. Pop Blossom finally comes back down. The Shy destroys him. Now for Suning in a bad place as Forge sends him skyward. Weiwei and Maple spread out far and wide, but Weiwei is just so damn fed. He's destroying them. It's death from below. Sinti, he uses a little bit early, but Jackie Love still in so much trouble. Chained on down. Maple lashes him, and that's all she wrote from IG. My god. I mean, IG were so close to being able to pick up that fight, but Moen Sword Art was able to pick it up. That Pike ultimate made it so much easier for Suning to take the fight. Howdy, Balan. He wants the pick. He's like, is Maple going to push this turret? I got myself a final spark. But he's not going to do it. So playing reserved here, and that's exactly what he needed to do after that very long fight, which, as you mentioned, Raz, was looking like it was IG's. It was tough. Started out with a pick. Vivi was so low after this one, and so you start to see Maple come through. Of course, he was going to be looking to steal the ultimate from Knight. Take a look at how low he was, of course, chugging in potions. Why The only reason why he stayed in a little bit longer. Maple made it easy to be able to look for the, the pick onto the Shy. But if you look towards the minimap, they were just coming in really close. Every member was starting to converge. You see Rek'Sai coming in alongside the uh, oh. Yumi Pike. Already looking for the next play as well. Once again, we don't get a chance to see it because our bloodiest team IG are up at it once again, but it's Suning who's starting the play onto Jackie Love, who already altered. He has nothing to get out. Way, way, six kills in the game, Raz. And this man is stacking up once again. It was impending doom right there. They saw him moving. They just couldn't stop him. Sword Art and SMLZ are at the core of this play. Mobility Boots now picked up by Sword Art. Has himself uh -oh. almost a second item. Maybe caught out in the mid lane. Pop loss him down again. Shy picks that one up, four and one. It's going to be a game about the top laner of IG. At least they're trading through. They're making it competitive. They have to at least start oh. really dealing with Weiwei at this point. Yep. He's just been dominating the series. So we're not starting to roam here as well. Ning just waiting passionately by the side. Take a look at that. Near 1,000 gold being awarded to the Shy off just turret platings alone. Yep. 720, so another dominating performance from him. He has four kills for himself. He's already picked up his key items to be able to join his team fight. The Glacial, Nico, is going to be huge. And Forge has actually just been mechanically on point, so <gasps> you found him. Wow, that binding! How did it connect? Sword Art's been dropped. Let's go again. Pew Pew has no chance. And Weiwei Wei gives him something, but this is the Fed Shinjo. You don't want to be anywhere near him, but Maple's caught out on the wrong side. Pop Blossom available. How does he escape this one? Whew. I think he's going to be fine. But this is going to be tough. Much like game one, but kind of accelerated. IG just looking for fights to be able to come back, and it's off their two carries. It's off 
you know, they're really uh, well, and Nico to be able to bring it right back. Maple backing in a blind spot. Final spark to come out. Pop Blossom down onto Forge. Now he has to make the escape as Maple has King Slayer, but is denied. Ning flashes forward to pick up that kill, and the Shy's just working his magic on the turret. Yeah, they get this mid lane inner tower. Suddenly, vision control is going to be much easier for Invictus Gaming. Battling on back. Such a bloody game, too, though. 20 kills, 17 minutes. The Shy wants Weiwei Wei to add number 21. Gonna get dissuaded now. The flash comes forward from what? Sword Art. He wants the kill. Thinks he can get the Shy, who Pop Blossom's just in time, but Sword Art has the ulti available. The Shark hunting once again, but Wei Wei caught out. SMLZ trying to run back in. And Sword Art doesn't get what he wants. Soon he just keep going to the wolves. That was a kind of a crazy pick there. The hitbox didn't even look like it lined up. I'm not sure what to make of this game, Raz. It's so back and forth, but IG always coming out ahead on these trades. I mean, you always have to be in tune with the play. And I'm talking about, you know, if Jackie Love's trying to pick up bottom lane wave, he can't be doing that alone, or at least he has to be aware of where Sword Art and SMLZ is. I think they're starting to play to it. I think they're starting to group up now around Forge and the Shy. The Shy's not split pushing or in the side lane any longer. Oh, come on. No. Okay. Good block from Bing. I know you say no, but some crazy things have happened. That's a double mountain getting picked here as Raz always breaks the desk, whatever just happened there. Uh, it's an infernal for an infernal. I don't like but it. Next one's going to be a double infernal on the menu. Is they found Maple? It's Forge again who uh, whips the ultimate. We're going to talk about that in a second because Sword Art has come in strong with the final chapter. Still onto Maple. It's not enough. Sword Art slams him down with the X and soon he get a pick on what was a bigger play. That was unfortunate to see. I mean, he's been playing well this game so far. Hasn't has. been getting the kills, unfortunately, but he was feeling himself at that moment. He actually landed a pretty good flawless duet, but uh, yeah. Not going to be able to go any further. But that's that. a big pick with a bigger death timer. 20 seconds now for Suning to get advantage of that. And they've found Ning once again. On the hunt is Sword Art and SMLZ, who at this point it feels like their picks are going to define this game. Yeah, this game is moving so quickly that you oftentimes can't even slow yourself down and talk about the items in tow. And right now I'm pretty happy with uh, just the item break points from Invictus Gaming. It's sad that they're not able to group up and be able to nail down what they want to do. So sure. have a shove through mid. Be able to put control wards. Right now, they don't have control wards on the left side. They need to have that. Baron's going to be coming up. That's the side of the map they want to be able to control. And then make it so the Shy, once he gets a shove on top side, which is working well, well for him, he can start looking for uh, plays on flank. That's good. something that should work for Invictus Gaming, but every time they go from step one to step mm -hmm. five, they get, like, cut off in step two. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like something just hurts them, stops them abruptly. Yeah, I wonder what. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Personally, you know, just, uh, well, you hope zoom in on there's, there's so many more Enhanced. elements to this game, though, right? So, in game one, it was abrupt, it was it's a good way to put it, it was a massacre in the end, right? Yeah, in this game, the Shy has a very affirmative lead over Bu Bu with 3,000 gold in the mid lane. Forge is quite comfortable here as well. Trinity Force with Tiamat, uh, Steric Gage coming shortly. We finally have a, a time to talk about the items and they pop this thing up again. So that's upsetting, but... The hell does it even mean, so Asterix? Uh, Both of them have a 100% chance of being good people. <laughs> 66 to 47. Now that is over 100%, is it not? I would much rather talk about the <laughs> bottom one. 100% of the time, they make the right decisions. <laughs> yes, both teams. Uh, this is the time when you call up Clement, you get him on the line, you phone him in. 10 out of 10 times? It happens every time. Hell yeah. yeah. You know, if you... If you ever have any advice, 10 out of 10 times, they Ooh. give you the right ones, but here comes Invictus Gaming yeah. on it. Call up the, let's go. Start dialing the number, because IG start this up, and they have a mountain, so this is oh going down no. very, very fast. Flash away by Valam, but Baron's still going down. Yubu comes in, slicing Maelstrom into one, into two. Now for four, trying to zone them out for the steal. It's not possible, but they want the fight instead. Suning jump onto Ning. It's Maple in the pit. He gets erupted. The Shy goes in for the flank, but Weiwei takes the fight into Jackie Love, knocks him up. He's going to eventually die as well. They lock down Sword Art, who's still hunting. Balan is living on the backside, sends the shield to the Shy. Sword Art and SMLZ have been separated, but reunited in the end. He wants to evade this, because Suning have lost every single member apart from the two. He's going to heal up. He's got Zoomies. The Ooh. Shy Comet's there as well, so they can't follow this up. Yeah, Sword Art ended up missing his ultimate the second half, so he couldn't get a reset. And at the same time, I think they played a great job in Victus Gaming at just disengaging from it all. Yeah. I mean, Balan didn't want to get hit, so he flashed away. You took a look at Jackie Love in that fight and wanted to keep himself alive, rightfully so, and so 
back up behind the wall and take a look at this. Flank oh position, a lot of wars to catch him though. SMLC's attached as well. That's fake the shy. Buber gets locked on down, healed up with Zoomies. Goodbye. He needs an ult, but he can't find it. Buber TPs into his death. <laughs> SMLC <laughs> kills the shy. Oh, Yubi. The unguided missile gets the kill. Yeah. A lot of gold go to Yumi from that as well. And you pick up some more Magi stacks. You take that what you will. She lost a lot, actually. Yeah, she did, actually. She didn't pick lot. up anything. <laughs> Still, uh, okay. That's not how Magi's work. Yeah, that's very true, Rez. Uh, so getting the shine at the end, that death time is not going to mean too much because Bubu just ran into his death. This is, this is one of those games that just upsets you <laughs> or just excites you. There's no one between. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Which is a for you, Rez? Well... A bit of mix on both. A bit of both. So I kind of lied to you. Yeah. But it really does come at you in waves. It really comes at you in waves. Right now, Invictus Gaming are feeling it. Ah, uh, you're right. It does come in waves because <laughs> the, <laughs> the curdles. Take uh, a look at this, though. It's on Bubu if he can find a good ult in time, but he doesn't have his flash. Makes it even harder. With that Baron buff coming up as well, this is so hard for Sooning to defend. Where's their wave clear here? Maple is it at this point. With the barrened up minions, it's getting even more difficult. Sooning, getting aggressed on underneath the turret, and IG can stay here for ages. It's the only reason why they're not committing to any other wave. Mid lane and top lane waves aren't good for Invictus Gaming, but they're not concerned at all by the wave clear Sooning have. Sooning just needs to fight, right? That's the way they end up pushing them off. Yep. It would primarily be Kennen. He can't do that for his team, so no flash. Maybe it's going to be a pick from Sword Art. He's looking for it. Kennen's got Ignite now as well, so Bubu definitely wants to take this to Gage. Uh, Forge getting cheeky with the wave, clearing it out. What and the this heck? one is going to break the turret. All right, here we go. They have to do something. Got to pick on Jackie. Redemption comes down. Wayway wants to go in. That's a two-man beam locked on down once again. They found Maple in the fight. Didn't even begin, but now at a 4v5 disadvantage, IG just want to go. Where? How far are we taking this? The shy pop lost them down. They Vanguard Zedge into Wayway. Bubu sets up the slicing Maelstrom, but Forge has gone way too far forward. Now for IG, they know a key ultimate is down, but Forge drops first. Wayway coming second, Bubu third. Wow. Everyone from Zuning have been locked down. And look, it's just the Nico alive underneath the Nexus. I guess the answer is we're taking this one home. All the way to the bank. This was a game that was so back and forth, but one thing remains the same. IG can always play to their best when they're pushed into the corner. And much like the top series, much like this one now, we're going to go Wait to a, a potential second. game three. Maple's jumping in, but at this point, with the Void Rush, he needs to pull off a wonder. SMLZ's dead instantly. Maple's going to die here too as well, Raz. And I stand by it again against the wall. IG are going to a game three. Analyze that one. <laughs> That's a tough one, isn't it? You gotta love this kind of game from Forge. My mind, you look towards the heroes that really brought this one back. Forge did a damn good job this one. Is it really a performance? Was able to hold them firm and even though there's you constantly look to games like these that force misplays, right? Forced errors. Puts you in difficult positions where you're able to like sure you're on side lane, that's what your composition is supposed to do. And then you get challenged by the four-man Rome squad of Sunning, and I think he dealt with a lot of that. But the damage charts also don't lie. The Shy in this game also came out clutch in multiple moments. Yeah. He was setting up around the top side, and it was uh, through his lane that IG took control of this game. But uh, what's even better here is that Ning actually had a game. Yep, he was definitely available uh, <laughs> well from the early portions of the game. Yep. And while there were moments, once again, where like Weiwei had a great turnaround uh, gank in the bottom side of the map, that was great. It's really keeping it competitive in the jungle matchup. Uh, but ultimately, the solo lanes from Invictus Gaming came out forward. Yep. They came out strong. They were able to deny a lot of the uh, Pike, Yumi engages that had been so successful in game one. So past the early laning phase, you try and focus on like how she's able to, like you know, Yumi's able to get any poke, like they poke on Q, slow him down for the Pike Q. And that's always getting denied one shape or form. Like the light binding was something that they constantly had to deal with, and even if the like, you saw how, uh, you know, Nico was doing, yeah, constantly being in the area to force them back. It was a tough one for. Uh, SMLZ and Sword Art that game. Yeah, it really was. And it was a good read from IG that, like, okay, we're playing this lane again. But this time, when you have a Zaya Lux, it plays out so differently. Even though, at the start, it was like, well, there's a kill again. It looked, bottom lane. looked similar until... Okay, similar until... And, until but then we, mid a different mid-game, mid -game, right? I, I think my biggest uh, example of why it wasn't working out too well was 
you know, in the Baron fight specifically, in situations where it'd be so easy to pick a fight, get a few uh, pick potential, yep. it was completely not available. Like, Zaya was able to buy for a lot of time, not just through her ultimate, but if she's going forward, Feathers Dance, so many feathers on the field, yes. she can end up disengaging so easily and was able to pump out a lot of damage. Much more effective in this game than the last. So now for Zuning, you're like, okay, well that was, you know, that was a very interesting game. Weiwei once ahead once again got ahead early. Yes. But this time the transition wasn't there. Different champion, different style, but also much towards IG playing around the most dangerous part of Suning. I think the issue with Suning is that even like every time they got a pick, the question is what are you gonna be doing with it? Like what's the next goal? It couldn't be a tower. Issue is their composition isn't too good at being able to uh, you know, siege at all, especially when they've got the po uh, pick on towards the Lux, you can't really convert that into anything. Yep. They needed to turn into a larger team fight, larger goals. They needed so much more and really could open the game as easily as Invictus Gaming could. I know there's a lot to talk about with the second game because there was 38 kills in 24 minutes, but we're going to have a short break when we return. Recharge for game three of Zuning. Taking on IG. Minion's going to provide them a lot of anguish as Knight starts poking away and Top get the mid lane turret anyway. Yeah, this is really Woo! difficult for them to defend on. Marty, I know it doesn't do much damage, but Ben getting a pick. Wow, but that does equalize it down onto Logan as they jump on in. One dead with the flash there, with the slicing Maelstrom. It's over before it began. Top Esports can't be stopped, Creature, as they sit Rogue Warriors down. <laughs> Finally got the shove at the mid lane. This is what we're talking about with FBX. Catamarage coming down the flash forward with the light binding, but Chris gets turned on by Uzi. Exhausted out, but can they get the return kill? Oh. Uzi wants it, but a double bump, double Q, double kill for LWX. Four kills on LWX at the nine minute mark. That top are simply looking for the team fights rather than the actual Baron, and the Baron itself is acting as a bait to enable them to fight rewards. Oh, here it is! On the car, as Rogue Warriors might have found their big teleport coming in. But the end gets the slow on to no one. Misses everything as Logan sends himself up. Pop Blossom's down. Logan Flash flashes forward. out of it. What an AD carry here from Top Esports. The 369 jumps on Knight as well. With everyone else, there's no Pop Blossom to look forward to as Wooji. Gonna be hit one, two. Oh. No blast cone for you. out now as Chris though, doesn't get the dredge line, has to flash away, they find the protobelt engaged, Shiaoi gets the with the chain lash, and a cocoon's gonna come through, but I think Chris might oh. still be dead, Mink snipes him out, teleport coming in from RNG, they want to continue to play on their FBX bottom lane. Wrong side of the map. Oh my god, can he see Ming out, but he's in full vision, get him and comes through, the stun as well, Dilby is gonna ult, but I don't think he can get a reset, he needs to kill Longshik, tries to hop on over him, gets the third Q, sucks him down, Got reset it. there, Dilby is a machine, now onto Xiao, who they need to time this out, but I think he can kill okay. Uzi, at the same time, Dilby flashes on, the feathers fly, he almost kills him. Nasher's tooth, his W, will smoke LWX into him, the epic captain. So that's a, re that's a real poke possibility from Kramer now. Now what's going on here with FPX? Because LGG are running it up the mid lane. They'll get this tower for free. And FPX are going infernal. They bit. have to full base. They have to go back now. They're committing to... Oh, this is a really weird call. They're going for the fight. They In want the fight now. Inhibitor, they don't know where FPX are. They're going for the end game. FPX, come back to base, please. LGD are working their magic triple mount. They're going for the next. They make it quick. They make it fly. FPX wins their first game of the series. 